Hi guys, a brief video about my experience making a puzzle box as a novelty gift for my wife. These impossible dovetail boxes are relatively well known, but I'll show you my take on this idea and what I think makes it more interesting and applicable as a novelty gift box rather than just as a simple puzzle. I'll step through the process of making the design in Fusion 360, 3D printing and assembly and how the puzzle actually works. The video description has a timeline index if you want to skip directly to a particular section. But first, the obligatory self-promotion. The genesis of this project was deciding how to give my wife her favourite birthday present. Cold, hard, cash and lots of it. Previous years I had made her a money tree. And then there was the printing press that made money from plain paper. This year I thought I'd give her the impossible dovetail puzzle with the money inside and make her work a little. This was great until I tested the idea on some family members and then realised not everybody knows what a dovetail joint is or how it works. Before discussing the changes, I'll show how these things work. The trick with these impossible dovetail boxes is to realise that not only do you need to slide the section at an angle, but also that the sections are locked in place by a metal ball or rod held in place with a magnet. Which can only be moved with a firm smack. While as a tricky puzzle, it is good that it can take a while to work out. Not so good for a novelty gift box, as you want the person to be able to get the gift inside relatively quickly. Otherwise the whole thing can backfire and the person giving the gift may be the one getting the smack instead of the box. So I thought a few changes to give extra clues as to how to solve the puzzle were needed. Firstly, there are a couple of normal sliding dovetails, which clue you into how a dovetail joint works if you haven't seen these before. This then leads to the main puzzle. I made the locking rod slightly smaller than the internal hole, which allows some small movement, which gives the clue as to how the remaining sections slide. Finally, the words on top what does a husband always need, give the remaining clue as to the final step of the puzzle in that a smack is needed, which dislodges the locking pin and then the puzzle can be solved. Well that's about it for the rationale, the rest of the video is about the actual making. There are many examples of the dovetail box on sites such as Thingiverse, but like I just went through, I wanted some modifications so I made my own design using Fusion 360. I won't go through all the steps in Fusion necessary to make the design, as this would take some time. Although if enough people are interested, please leave your comments below. I will make a separate video on how I did this. The actual Fusion 360 file is on my website for download for any of you that want to modify or reproduce this. For the actual 3D printing, I used PLA with a 0.3mm layer height, infill of 5% and wall thickness was 3 layers. Obviously the settings are a little bit specific to my setup, but again, if anyone wants the details, again leave a comment below and I will get back to you. The Anycubic Mega 3D printer that I use, uh, particularly with the Ultra Base, makes things pretty easy. There is a little bit more of the time lapse for those who like to watch. Skip ahead to where I talk about the physical assembly if you want. With all the parts now 3D printed, the first step is sanding the inside surfaces of the dovetail joints. I didn't leave any tolerance in the actual 3D print between the various parts as I wanted a nice close fit to enhance the illusion of the puzzle. 
As it turned out, all that was needed was to sand flat the layer lines. Once all the dovetails were completed, the next thing was to clean out the engraved lettering. I'm not sure why, but the Cura slicing software included some brim within each of the lettering, even though the build plate adhesion setting was set to outside only. The final step is inserting the magnet to hold the retaining pin. I used a 10 by 2 mm magnet. Originally I bought these from eBay in a set of 20 meant to make uh, fridge magnet cards. I had a nice tight fit so didn't need to use any glue. The retaining pin was cut from a piece of metal rod salvaged from an old printer. I made the pin 10 mm long, giving 5 mm overlap between the two sliding sections. The only trick here is to make sure that the receiving hole for the pin, for when it is dislodged by smacking the puzzle, is deep enough so that the pin doesn't bounce and get caught by the magnet again. Some final testing to make sure it was all working okay and then the job's done. Well guys, for any interested, the Fusion 360 file is available on my website if you want to make your own and or modify my design. The uh, Fusion 360 allows you to output STL files and then you can use your favourite slicer software to make the G-code for your own 3D printer. If you found this interesting and or helpful, I appreciate if you could take the time to like, comment and subscribe.